Let's now have an exclusive conversation with the founder and leader of the All People's Congress. You know him as Hassan Ayariga. Some of you have called him Ayarikov in time past. Chief, good morning. How are you doing, sir? Good morning. Good to you. see you one more time. Thank you. Firm Thank handshake you. it is. Great. You're great. keeping great, aren't you? Yes, doing very well. Thank I you. See. How are you too? Very fine. You've uh, largely been silent. Why? I don't think so. Probably, probably haven't been following mm. our press conferences mm. and our interaction with the media and keeping government on tour. Mm. The last press conference we had was two weeks ago, which we actually outlined the reason for the fall of the sea, mm. the challenges that confront our nation, right. the suffering and hardship in Ghana, the sale of government properties and factories, mm. and many other things. Corruption scandal in mm. the... And the difficulty of the Ghanaian people in recent time, the issue of doing so, mm. coming back again, the issue of... Uh, government says doing so is not back. Yeah, that is what government wants us to believe. Okay. Not, but, but that is not it. The, but that is not it. People get up whole day, they don't have lights. Mm -hmm. In certain areas, it even went off for three days. And most of their food stuff in fridges and mm -hmm. cool environment got spoiled. So when government is saying Jumso is not bad, maybe it's not in their homes, mm -hmm. but the individual Ghanaians know that Jumso is bad. Is the government being untruthful? I think government upon government has always been untruthful to Ghanaians. Government upon government have always lied their way through. Mm -hmm. And when they get power, they continue to deceive people, believing that when it's time for politics, they'll come back and clean the mess. Mm -hmm. And we have been saying that it is high time the people hold government responsible. It is high time technocrats and citizens of this country mm -hmm. judge people per their promises and per their activities and whatever they have ruled out mm -hmm. and whatever they have achieved. You don't just give government power because another political party is supposed to win every eight years and another one is supposed to win another eight years. So every eight years you change power. That is not what we are looking for. We've, we've gone past the state where mm -hmm. NDC and MPP are playing Ghana like a football team. The, the, the minority parties, as they like to call you, have not been able to amass the kind of votes to be able to break the duopoly uh, of the NDC and MPP. I mean, since 1992, what will change this time around? I think that it's not about the minority parties not being able to amass the vote. It's about the, the, the media. It's that. about the media not giving the other political parties the opportunity to sell themselves. The, the electoral records That's show that. I, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming to that. What I'm saying is that when you, the media, do not give us the opportunity to sell mm -hmm. our policies, and then you have programs every day, mm -hmm. and you have only NDC and MPP represented, mm -hmm. when Ghanaians in the North Shell are tired of these two political parties mm -hmm. and are looking for a third option, people with different mindset, people with different views mm -hmm. to tell them what is happening. But the media, and most of these, don't forget, the media is the fourth arm of government. Right. And when you don't give us the opportunity, mm -hmm. how do we sell or propagate our policies? That's the problem we Maybe find. your policies are not attractive enough. We have, has, the best, it, have you thought about that? We well? have the best policy in the, in, in the, in the history of Ghana so far. Mm -hmm. If the NDC and the MPP policies are good, how come we are where we are? Mm -hmm. This time around, we need a drastic change. A change not from NDC to MPP or MPP back to NDC. Mm. Ghanaians must make one serious change in their lifetime that will abandon these two political parties and go for a third option. I, I saw your party's manifesto in 2016. It looked pretty much like that of the NPP. You shared similar ideas. So it's, it's not a departure from what we have known, really, if your 2016 manifesto is anything to go by. It's not about just the manifesto. People have manifesto and then don't follow the manifestos. They, they the manifesto is your Bible? Yes, it's our Bible. 
But I'm saying that you said it looks pretty like the MPP. Right. And but is the MPP actually fulfilling their manifesto promises mm. or they're just fooling Ghanaians? What would be your fair assessment of the government, Akufuado Baumia's led government? What would be your fair, honest assessment I think, as a presidential material yourself? I think so far they have, they have, they have failed Ghanaians. Really? Nanado, as a presidential candidate in 2016, mm -hmm. campaigned better than as a president in 2017. Really? Yes. Why Nanado you as a presidential can mm -hmm. candidate in 2016 campaign better to win power than a president working for Ghana. Why do you say that? Because he's failed. Ghanaians had so much hope mm. in this current administration. Ghanaians believed in the integrity of Nanado. They looked at his qualities mm. around him, the qualities around him, his age, mm. his exposure, his level of experience, mm. and believed that this was a man coming to salvage Ghana mm. and gave so much hope in the MPP and they voted against the NDC. Mm. But what are we seeing? Corruption, mm. vandalizing of pro government properties, abuse of government appointees and power, mm. kidnappings and killing, assaults on political party, members mm. and the worst of it today is that we have find ourselves in the history of the culture of silence would you rather give him uh, let him die before you bury him as, as in let him finish his tenure of office before you run a, a full assessment like that and say he has failed I think two and a half years is enough for a child to walk and mm. talk so if you cannot assess Nanado in two and a half years then you can equally not assess him in four years because he's gone more, he spent more time in government mm. than the rest of the time left for him. If you had a chance to meet the president today, yeah. what would be the single advice you will give him? I would tell him to wake up. And do Because what? in 2016, I put up a small old video mm. and I told Ghanaian that Nanado, even if he becomes the president, will not one, be the one managing our economy. Mm. There will be certain people managing you, so they should tell us, Ghanaians, who is going to be on the front line managing this country. Right. Today, that's what is happening. Nanado himself as president mm. doesn't even know what is happening in this country. Really? I'm telling you. How do you know this? Because nothing is moving. The Nanado, we all, let me say, thought of and think was, and people thought this is a man who was coming to salvage this country. It's a man who is not sleeping. The macroeconomic indicators, indicators are, are working. Uh, free SHS, they will talk about one district, one factory, drone delivery service, and, and all the others. They, they, they say they are working. Let me take you to just small assessment of Nanado. Mm. Nanado, when he came to power, decided to reduce taxes on goods and services, mm. abolish import taxes and other taxes. What, it did, what, what was the effect on our economy? Did the prices of goods and services go down? Mm. No. Did we see reduction in the prices of commodities in the market? No. Mm. So what it means is that the reduction in taxes did not translate into reduction in goods and services mm. for the consumer. So basically, the consumer is still paying more than ever. Mm. So what's the essence of reducing taxes when you cannot benefit? When the consumer doesn't benefit. Mm. That is number one. Number two, when Nanado came, he promised one district, one fact. Right. Good. Fair enough. I, I hoped he, had, he did something. But you see, we have several factories in this country that have been abandoned by the NDC and MPP. And then you talk about one district, one factory. When you cannot actually renovate mm. or let me put the weight revive those old factories into good use mm. now you're thinking of building new ones look we import over 1.2 million dollar billion dollars of rice every year mm. for local consumption right we have a rice factory in Alvayim mm. and we have a rice factory in Palu. we have abandoned those factories to what we import over three hundred thousand dollars million dollars 
of tomato paste mm -hmm. and ketchup. Mm -hmm. We have the palgu tomato factory right. rotting there, mm -hmm. and other wenchi tomato factory rotting. We baby pampers. Mm. We spent seven hundred million dollars on the importation of baby diapers. Mm. We have cotton factories in the northern part of Ghana. What do we do? Fish. Mm -hmm. Not less than seven hundred million dollars do we use spend in the importation of fish. But we have to see right in front of us mm -hmm. the lakes and the rivers. What do we do? We still import. Are we in a hopeless situation? Worse than hopeless. I don't even know. How would better. you describe it? I think we don't have a vision. We are not focused. We are not serious. I think we have taken Ghana for a ride. Mm -hmm. And Ghanaians themselves don't even realize that. And we need to sit up and understand that this country mm -hmm. is deteriorating, ret retrogressing in the 21st century. You don't sound happy. I am not happy. I, cannot, I don't even sleep. Because I cannot imagine that we have all these intellectuals, mm -hmm. we have all these fine brains, good politicians in the system, yet we are where we are. If Nkrumah should come back today, mm -hmm. he will regret ever being a Ghanaian. Let me take you again to the issue of the Nandu An government. Mm -hmm. I just want to give you a very simple explanation okay, and finally, an example right. for you to understand. Your father passed on and leaves property for you and your, your children, mm -hmm. your brothers and mm -hmm. siblings to manage. Then the one who is supposed to be managing you starts selling the houses one after the other. Mm -hmm. The properties that your father left, the factories, the companies and the building. And then that person tells you he's a good manager. Do you believe such a person is a good manager? This is what we are, we are seeing in this country. The MPP government is selling all pro government properties mm -hmm. and calling it privatization. Uh, ECG is now called PDS. Mm -hmm. This is one thing that has Kenyans, if we, if we do not even share the national cake equally, mm -hmm. this is sectors that we can actually reduce the cost of it to benefit the ordinary Ghanaian to be able to live in very comfortable. Hmm. We've sold those ones out. Mr. Ayaga, let's go back to some of the issues that you talked about. You talked about corruption thriving under this government. Uh, Honorable Martin Alamisi Benz Kaiser Amidu was uh, duly inducted as a um, uh, uh, special prosecutor. You think that that is enough to fight corruption? And, and by the way, I spoke with the chief imam, the national chief imam, uh, last Thursday, and he says that it takes willing people to end corruption. It's possible to end corruption. You see, I will take you back to the earlier discussions where you said that we had similar manifestos. manifestos. Right. In our manifesto, we spoke about an independent special prosecutor. Okay. MPP, in covering the manifesto of APC, mm. ignored the independent and decided to put special prosecutor. They say you copied them. That's what I'm now. When I explain and finish, okay. you know who copied who. Okay. So they ignored that word independent and rather put special prosecutor. Okay. You cannot tie my hands and ask me to slap you. When you bring special prosecutor's office on board, mm -hmm. he needs to be independent to be able to act devoid of political power, uh, party in interference, mm -hmm. devoid of any kind of interference mm -hmm. so that he's independent and autonomous. He can manage pursue all cases mm. without recourse to anybody. Today, the NDPP, in their confused manner, mm. decided to put Martin Hamidou as a special prosecutor under the office of the Attorney General. So Martin Hamidou, as a special prosecutor, cannot operate on his own mm. and cannot fight any corruption until the file is given to him from the office of the attorney general. It says people can petition him. You can petition, but if you petition and your boss decides that you're not going to handle the case, what are you going to do? That's why I say you tie my hands and you ask me to slap you. I'm sure you had so, a conversation about Aisha Juan as well, and the Sino Hydro and the matters arising from the senior minister's speech. What are your thoughts about it? West in the history of the world, not Ghana. We prosecute Ghanaians. Do you know how many Ghanaians are locked up in prison in the past seven to 13 months? Mm -hmm. Ghanaian 
those who are locked up, do you know? Go to the prisons mm. and you'll be shocked the number of Ghanaians that are locked up because of Galamse. Mm. This is our country. And the heart of the nation is our mining sector. And we are so ignorant. Mm. That's why I get emotional. We're so ignorant that you give the heart of your nation to foreigners to mine. Are we really thinking as a people that we have given our, where in this world mm. that the Americans will give their heart to the African people to work? Even as an African, you go to America, you know your position. Right. Go to Europe and see whether they will give you their mining sector, whatever kind of industry is it or whatever sector it is, for you to work there. Not even to mine, to work as a worker. You don't get that position because you are not even qualified to be there. But we are so ignorant. I hear Sofa Marvel saying that we are deporting her back because of we are bilateral. Some, some bile. Are you serious? You, you, you're imprisoning your people, shoot and kill. That is the word they are using against ordinary citizens, the youth of our country that are supposed to be the future generation, the people that we're supposed to take care of. Mm -hmm. We're not taking care of them. Now we're killing them. And we are seeing diplomatic call. Are you, who thinks like that? Ms. Ayaga, let's move to IPAC. I'm sure you've heard also the uh, face of the General Secretary of the NDC with the boss of the EC. Uh, issues arising from the IPAC meeting. I'm sure you've been following and attending yeah. some in your own right. Yeah. W what are your thoughts? Are we heading towards a ditch? Are we going the right path? Are we retrogressing like you said in the past? What are I you think we're going, we're going towards disaster. Why do you say so? If we don't take time, it will cause civil war. The way the EC chair, even mm. though I personally was happy mm. when she was appointed okay. and I thought some reforms will be implemented mm. to make it a more understandable and competitive place. Okay. You see, IPAC only exists because of political parties. Mm. The EC exists because of political parties. Right. So the EC should know without political parties, they don't exist. Mm. So in dealing with them, you should learn to understand their language mm. and spell out things for the for all of you to understand, because it is a give and take thing right. that people need to deliberate. Mm. That is where we deliberate and come up with reforms, agreed reforms, resolutions. Mm. But when we go there and we are fighting each other like mouse and cat, then we have failed our economy. We are, mm. we go, we are heading towards disaster. Mm. If the EC has a problem with the political parties, it is her duty to sit with them and resolve these issues of you, you don't see that happening? I don't see that. I see some level of arrogance mm. in it. I see some level of people are going to abuse power and say, look, whether you like it or not, I'm going to do A. Okay. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to do B. We are not living in a kangaroo republic. And that's dangerous. And that is very dangerous. Final question look, to you. Look, the EC says mm. that all political parties must have offices okay. across the country. The country. Right. But the, EP, the, the EC itself cannot have offices mm. and cannot, cannot conduct elections mm. at the police stations and the constituencies, but want to conduct elections the, at the district, district level. Offices. So if you, and when they confronted them, they said they don't have money. But you want us as political parties to be able to have police offices in all the constituencies, right. but you don't have money just to conduct elections. At that virus. You mean and to I, say the EC is not complete in the processes yes, that they want to? They, they want us to do that. And then you come out and say that you cannot carry the machines to the constituencies and the police stations. Oh my God. Are you serious? How are you going to conduct election then? Are you going to carry the madam herself there? Because you need to conduct elections at the police stations 2020. The two political parties are currently in a meeting with the National Peace Council. Yesterday they had a second meeting to want to end vigilantism in this country. One, is it your honest opinion that vigilantism would ever end in this country? And two, do you think that we're doing anything right with that meeting? I don't think we're doing anything right with that meeting. You see, that's why I say we have lost control of what is leadership about, what leadership's all about. Mm. You have an issue at hand that has to do with crime. Okay. And you avoid that aspect of the crime. And you go and sit with thieves. And you ask the thieves how we're going to manage how to stop stealing. You're a thief. Mm. And that's what you live on. 
and you want to stop stealing. And you call each other and say, let's talk about how we stop stealing. Who are and the thieves here? The handies and the MPP. They, they have the vigilante groups. Okay. And they want to sit down and discuss about how they want to stop it. They know how to stop Who it. Who would you rather have in a meeting? I think that as government, the important factor in vigilantism is the crime aspect of it. Okay. That is the important factor. Do we need a new law? We don't need a law. We need to exercise the laws that we have. That crime should be treated as crime, no matter who commits that crime. It has no exception. Will vigilantism ever end in Ghana? Vig vigilantism will only end when we begin to deal with crime as crime. But when we say we're going to change mm. the word vigilante and put clauses to stop them from operating, mm. good. You say there is no vigilantes. And then the same people acting the same way mm. now call themselves political foot soldiers, mm. committing the same crime and atrocities. What are you going to do? Hmm. <laughs> Zaza Yarga, have you picked your running mate yet? We are yet to finish the police. Do you stages. have any names in mind? Oh, very soon it will come up. You, you don't want to spill the beans? Not now. We're Not still now. doing what is important, reorganization. Must we still vote for you in 2020? I think that is the best option now. We don't All have right. another option. The best option is the APC, mm -hmm. the party that believes in quality leadership. The party that believe in empowering the youth of this country because all these old men have abandoned the youth of this country and they are wandering all the streets of Accra, don't know, not knowing what to do. Should we believe you? Believe me, I'm the last option. Okay, that's Mr. Hassan Ayariga, he's the founder and leader of the All People's Congress. He says, Believe him, and uh, we're retrogressing as opposed to progressing.